Please set up and maintain account recovery information. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. By now you probably know that I hear from folks who are having trouble signing into various online accounts almost daily. And unfortunately, a high percentage of those people never get back in. And the reason they don't get back in usually boils down to their account recovery information. So let's talk about what that is, why that exists, and why it's so incredibly important for you to keep it up to date. Account recovery information exists for exactly one purpose, and that is to provide an alternate means of proving you are who you say you are. Normally, when you sign into an account, the fact that you know your login ID and your password basically confirms, yep, you're the person who's supposed to have access to this account. Great. But when that doesn't work, well, there needs to be another way. That's what the account recovery information is all about. This is the stuff that kicks in when you say, I forgot my password. It's important because this information that you set up while you had account access is the stuff that is that fallback mechanism. The fact that you can access, use, or otherwise verify through this account recovery information proves that you are who you say you are. Remember, you know you are who you say you are, but the service you're signing into doesn't. If you don't know your password, they don't know you're not some hacker. They have to go through additional levels of verification to make sure that they grant access only to the person authorized to access the account. Now, what I just said was very important. Account recovery information is stuff that you set up while you have access to the account. What that means, of course, is that you have to set it up before you need it. Once you've lost access to your account, once you've forgotten your password, or once your account has been hacked, it's too late. That account recovery information has to be there before you need to use it so that it can be used to verify, yeah, you were the person who set it up originally. The other thing, and this I think is the thing that really is responsible for the majority of accounts that are lost permanently, is simply this. You must keep your account recovery information up to date. If you change your phone number and your phone number is in your account recovery information, you need to go change your account recovery information. Your old phone number, the one you no longer have access to, can no longer be used to prove that you are you. It needs to be current. The same is true for any alternate email address you might have associated with the account. If you can't access that alternate email address, then it's like not having it there at all. It's like not having the account recovery information present at all. And that doesn't matter if it's because you can't sign into that account or you no longer have that account. The account recovery information that is associated with your account must be present and must be kept up to date. Now, I do wanna briefly go over some of the types of account recovery information we're talking about. The most common one is the alternate email address. That is simply an email address that the service you're attempting to recover can send a message to, to prove that you are who you are. Your ability to access that message, to get that message, basically says, okay, yep, you're the person that set up this account recovery alternate email address in the beginning, so you must be you. The mobile phone number, it's controversial. And I say that only because the conspiracy-minded among us believe that requiring or even asking for a mobile number is somehow the service's attempt to gather more data about us. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, it doesn't even make sense. Your mobile provider already has all that information. They've got oodles of information. If you have a mobile phone, the horse is already out of the barn. The fact is, when services ask for your mobile number, it's another way for them to confirm you are who you say you are. By setting up that number 
and then confirming that you have access to that number when you set it up. That number can then be used later to once again prove you are who you say you are and should be allowed back into your account. Now, in some cases, landlines can be used. The difference, of course, is that a mobile number can receive a text message. A landline cannot. There are some services that will allow you to specify a landline to be used for recovery, and they'll actually call you and read to you with an automated voice the code that they then want you to enter to prove that you have access to that landline. It's not common. But for those of you without mobile phones, it's definitely something worth looking into to see if whatever service we're talking about has this as an option. Recovery codes are another one. Recovery codes are codes that you print out once and save somewhere secure. And they can usually then be used as part of the recovery process to prove that you are the person who, back when you had access to the account, printed out those codes and can provide them as requested. These are often presented and potentially even required when you set up two-factor authentication. Don't skip that step. Save them, print them, do something, put them in a safe place so that if you ever need to recover your account, you have them available. Now, secret questions are the kinds of things that people ask me about a lot. Honestly, secret questions should not be used. Unfortunately, many services still try to use them. The problem is that it's been shown that secret questions basically aren't secure. It's very easy for you to find out my mother's maiden name. It's not that hard for you to find out any number of other things that are often used as answers to the secret questions. Now, we could get very convoluted about secret questions and make up answers, treat them as passwords and so forth. But then you add a whole other layer of complexity by having to remember these answers that aren't really answers to the questions that you're being asked. So, yeah, I answer them if I'm asked, I use them if they're present, but I don't rely on them. And you will see that over time, many services are no longer using secret questions and their answers. The bottom line here is really super simple, but it's also super important. Set up the account recovery information for any of your accounts you consider to be even a little bit important and most of them are, then make sure to maintain that information over time. As your phone number changes, change it in the account recovery information. If your alternate email addresses change, change it in the account recovery information. Yeah, it can be a little bit of a pain if you have a large number of accounts, but trust me, it is nothing, nothing compared to the pain of losing an important online account potentially forever. I hope that's helpful. I hope you take those steps. For comments, for updates, for related links and more, visit askleo.com 149957. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.